Witness the epic conclusion to the Jupiter's Legacy series when the Queen of Palarax begins her invasion of Earth. Are there any supers left to stop her? And is Palarax the only planet with its sights set on Earth? Let's find out in our review of Jupiter's Legacy finale number one from Dark Horse Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Jupiter's Legacy finale number one. Well, here we go, boys and girls. If you're going to end a critically and commercially successful series, you might as well end it in style. Writer Mark Miller doesn't miss a beat by picking up precisely where the last issue left off with death, consequences, epic action, and an escalation of galactic proportions. Before we dig into the current issue, let's recap at least at a high level where we left off because it's been a while. Previously in Jupiter's Legacy, the Utopian had been stripped of his powers, his father had murdered, and his mother and sister trapped on this alien world known as Palarax, light years away. The final executions were soon to begin as the Queen ordered all supers put to death. They want Earth more than anything in the universe before even a greater threat destroys their world first. And that brings us to the beginning of the end. In Jupiter's Legacy Finale number 1, Queen Borrelia of Palarax orders the execution of Lady Liberty and her daughter Sophie. The Queen's bid to invade Earth is ready when she can't have any supers alive to interfere with her plans. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the Utopian is surrounded by Palaraxians with the ability to block his powers, so he's completely vulnerable and mortal and about to be dead. Now, just to be fair, admittedly, it's a little unusual to start the next or last arc in this case with all the protagonists in the worst possible position, but Mark Miller makes it look easy. It's a ridiculously effective way to start the issue off and to start the arc. When you're already in a hole, the only place to go for a hero is up. The aliens surrounding Utopian taunt him for his powerless state. Prince Caius relays the message that Utopian's father is dead, which is the sacrifice that he made in the previous issue, and as his final act of mockery, he picks up a car and smashes it down on Utopian. Suddenly, the ground shakes and explodes upward through the crushed car. The Utopian now has his father's power rod, which he uses to take out the Palaraxians blocking his power and kill Prince Caius. The Utopian uses the rod to teleport to his remaining family back on Palarax. Mark Miller hits readers with a classic one-two punch of superhero wow moments to put the Utopian back on top when it seemed all hope was lost. Consistent with almost all Miller World titles at this point, Miller hits fast and hard with Utopian's role reversal to pick up the energy and anticipation for what comes next. Nothing gives you that fist-pumping yeah moment like a superhero who overcomes all his enemies. The Utopian appears on Palarax just in time to stop the execution of his mother and sister. He dashes through the guards and surrounding forces, knocking down large statues to remind the Queen of his indomitable strength. When Utopian grabs the Queen, threatening to do his worst, he's suddenly erect with debilitating pain in his head. If there's one word that's going to sum up this issue, it's roller coaster. Mark Miller takes readers on a roller coaster of, of lows, then highs, then lows again. This issue is a pulse-pounding layer cake of surprising twists and turns. Nothing is predictable, nothing is certain, and you don't know where the story is headed next. We soon find out that the Utopian's crippling pain comes from the leader of Shoboth, Palarax's rival world. The leader saw what was happening to Earth and Palarax during their conflict, so he took the perfect moment to strike while both parties were at their weakest. In other words, a new competitor has come on the scene who wants Earth for himself, and Queen Borrelia isn't too happy about it. The issue concludes with the leader of Shoboth giving a very, very specific kill order, blue skies showing up where there shouldn't be any blue skies at all, and the galaxy's biggest calling card. Overall, Jupiter's Legacy Finale Number 1 begins the final act in the superhero series with a roller coaster of surprises, drama stacked on top of drama, and a cliffhanger that elevates the stakes to new heights, figuratively and literally. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. Artist Tommy Lee Edwards uses a grounded, semi-realistic style to give the characters as much humanity as possible. That said, Edwards doesn't skimp on the backgrounds or the scale of the proceedings, especially on Palarax, which looks like an alien world that's somewhat desolate and barren. So the comic looks every bit as cinematic as it should for a realistic set of actors and actresses if you want to think of it as a storyboard but the backgrounds bring you into a fully realized alien world 
So let's take a step back and look at the big picture, primarily for new readers to Jupiter's Legacy. If you are a new reader and you're picking up this title and wondering how much of the previous issues you need to know to jump on and kind of figure out what's going on, to be fair, you're going to struggle. In truth, you need to have read all of the previous arc at least, or you're going to be completely lost. Put another way, this issue is a terrible jumping on point for Jupiter's Legacy because you start in the middle of a cliffhanger. So if you really want to enjoy this issue to the best that you can or should, you really need to go back and read the previous arc at least. Final thoughts, what do we think about Jupiter's Legacy Finale number 1 from Dark Horse Comics? Takes readers on a roller coaster of thrills and spills when the final invasion of Earth is set to begin. Mark Miller leaps into the final arc with all the energy of a runaway freight train, and Tommy Lee Edwards' semi-realistic art style is a cinematic mix of alien fantasy and grounded believability. In other words, this comic is a winner. Therefore, Jupiter's Legacy Finale number 1 earns a rock-solid 9 out of 10. If this issue is any indication of how the rest of the arc will go, Mark Miller will end the series with swings just as big or bigger than last year's big game. But what do you think? Is the end of Jupiter's Legacy high on your must-have list? Leave a thumbs up if it is, and drop a comment below with which Miller World title is your favorite so far. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, Check out the varying covers and preview pages and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.